Last week, a pro member shared an incredible website that completely blew me away. It featured a stunning 3D style video gallery with a parallax effect that added a whole new level of depth to the experience. A few months ago, I wouldn't have even dared to attempt rebuilding something like this. But since diving into 3GS recently, we have now unlocked endless possibilities for recreating such interactive web experiences. So I thought, why not take this one on? After experimenting for a few hours, I managed to create a similar 3D video gallery including that parallax effect. Different elements move at varying speeds, creating a dynamic sense of depth. Using 3JS, I put the videos on a curved plane geometry, giving the layout a slick, distorted feel that truly stands out. In today's video, I'll walk you through the code for building this visually stunning landing page using HTML, CSS, and 3JS. We'll also add that smooth text animation that triggers on mouse over for that extra flair. If you find this tutorial helpful, don't forget to drop a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. And for those looking to unlock the source code for this project as well as hundreds of other unique builds, check out the pro membership linked in the description. Alright, let's dive into the code. For the HTML, we are keeping things super minimal. I've added a simple navbar with some placeholder text to set the tone. Below that, we have the most important part, the header. Inside the header, I've included an h1 element for the main title which will later become the centerpiece of our design. And that's it for the HTML. Now let's move on to the CSS to bring this to life. First, I ensured all elements have consistent sizing by resetting margins and paddings and setting the box model to include padding and borders within the element's dimensions. The HTML and body elements are styled to fill the entire viewport. I've set the background to white for a clean and minimal look and ensured that any overflow is hidden. The canvas element which we'll use for rendering the layout is positioned to cover the entire screen staying fixed to the top left corner of the viewport. The navbar is styled to remain fixed at the top of the page and stretch across the full width of the screen. It's centered horizontally with some padding. I've also used a bold uppercase font paired with a bright green background to make the text visually stand out. The header is positioned in the exact center of the screen using a combination of fixed positioning and transformations. To enable 3D effects, I've configured the header to preserve its three-dimensional properties during animations. Additionally, I've added a realistic depth effect by applying a perspective of 1000 pixels. Inside the header, the main title is styled to grab attention. It's displayed in uppercase with a bold modern font and a size that scales relative to the viewport for responsiveness. To enhance the visual effect during animations, the back face of the text is hidden and text selection is disabled to keep the interaction seamless. And that's it, let's get to JavaScript now. First, we need some video data, I've created an array called data that holds the paths to our video files. Each entry represents a video that will be displayed in the gallery. Next, we define the gallery's layout and visual parameters in an object called params. This includes properties like the number of rows and columns for the gallery grid, the curvature to create a 3D effect, and the spacing between videos. We'll also specify the dimensions of each video, the overall depth of the layout, the vertical elevation, and the range for the camera's focus. These parameters make the customization easy, and we'll use them throughout the script. First, we initialize the scene. Then, we set up the camera. I'm using a perspective camera which mimics how we perceive depth in real world. The camera is positioned slightly back on the z-axis to give us a good view of the gallery. Finally, we create a WebGL renderer to handle the rendering of our 3D scene. I've enabled anti-aliasing for smoother edges and set the renderer size to match the window's dimensions. The background is set to white for a clean look and the renderer is added to the page by appending it to the document body. Now let's add some optional debugging tools and set up the interactivity for our gallery. First, I've included a flag which is set to false by default called debug mode. When enabled, it initializes a graphical user interface. This interface allows us to dynamically tweak the parameters of our gallery. 
such as the number of rows and columns, the size of the videos, the spacing between them, and even the curvature and depth of the layout. Each adjustment triggers an update to the gallery in real time, making it easier to fine tune the design. Moving on to the header, we'll add some dynamic movement based on mouse interactions. To do this, I have selected the header element and defined variables to track its rotation and translation. For mouse tracking, I set up the mouse X and mouse Y to capture the cursor's position relative to the center of the screen. Additionally, target X and target Y will be used for smooth transitions, ensuring the header responds gracefully to the mouse movement. Finally, we define a look at target using 3JS. This vector will help the camera focus on the correct area, adding a layer of depth and interactivity to the overall experience. Next, I will add the create video element function. This function is responsible for generating an HTML video element for each of our videos. The source attribute is set to the video source URL. We enable cross-origin support to handle any potential issues with the video playback across different domains. The video is set to loop, play in line, and remain muted by default. Finally, the video automatically starts playing as soon as it's added to the gallery. Next, let's talk about the calculate rotations function. This handles the rotation angles for each video plane, which are crucial for achieving a natural curve effect in the gallery. The rotation along the y-axis is calculated based on the x-coordinate of the video. Here, we use a mathematical approach, applying a curvature and depth parameters to define how each video tilts horizontally. Similarly, for the rotation along the x-axis, we use the video's vertical position and a vertical curvature factor. This creates a slight upward and downward tilt, giving the layout a more dynamic and immersive feel. These rotations ensure the videos align perfectly with the curvature of the gallery. Finally, the calculate position function determines the exact placement of each video. The X and Y coordinates are based on the grid's rows and columns spaced evenly for balance. The Z coordinate creates depth by curving the videos backward, calculated using the X position and curvature. We also apply vertical adjustments for a dynamic effect and fine-tune the overall elevation. Rotations are then integrated to align perfectly with the gallery's curve. These functions work together to place each video in its precise 3D position with correct tilt giving our gallery its distinctive look. Now let's focus on assembling the video planes and dynamically updating the gallery. We begin by defining an empty array called videos which will store all the video planes that we create. The create video plane function is responsible for building each plane and preparing it for the gallery. Inside this function, we randomly select a video from our data array. For this selected video, we create a texture using video texture. The specialized texture ensures that the video plays smoothly on the 3D plane with consistent quality and performance. To eliminate issues like pixelation, we set both the min and mac filters for the texture to linear filtering. Next, we define the geometry of the video plane using the width and height parameters for our configuration. We then apply a material that maps the video texture onto the plane. The material is basic and renders the video on both sides of the plane, making it visible from any angle. Once the plane is created, we calculate its exact position and rotation using the calculate position function. This ensures the plane is aligned perfectly within the 3D grid with depth, spacing and curvature already factored in. The plane's position and rotation are then applied, making it ready for rendering. To enhance interactivity and give the gallery a dynamic feel, we add custom user data to each plane. This includes its base position and rotation values, as well as a parallax factor which determines how much it moves during interactions. Each plane also gets randomized offsets and rotation modifiers, introducing a subtle variations in their behavior. Finally, we add a phase offset, allowing each plane to oscillate uniquely during animations. This randomness adds life to the gallery, preventing it from feeling too mechanical or static. The update gallery function ensures the gallery remains dynamic and responsive. First, it loops through the existing video planes and clears them by pausing their videos and removing them from the scene. This ensures we start fresh every time the gallery is updated. 
After clearing, the function regenerates the grid by iterating over the defined rows and columns. For each grid cell, it calls create video plane to generate a new plane which is then added to the both videos array and the 3D scene. Now let's add interactivity and animations to bring the gallery to life. First, we capture mouse movements to make the header and the gallery respond dynamically. Using the mouse move event, we calculate the cursor's position relative to the center of the screen. These values are normalized to a range between minus 1 and 1. Based on these calculations, we update the header's rotation along the x and y axis as well as its translation on the z axis. This gives the header a fluid motion effect that reacts to mouse movements. Next, we ensure the gallery is responsive by handling window resizing. When the window resizes, we adjust the camera's aspect ratio and update its projection metrics. We also resize the renderer to match the new window dimensions, ensuring the 3D elements remain perfectly aligned. Now let's move to the core of the interaction, the animate function. This function runs continuously using request animation frame to create smooth animations. Inside, we update the header's transformation properties to reflect the latest rotation and translation values, adding a transition effect for a polished look. To animate the video planes, we first calculate the target position for the camera to look at. The target position is influenced by the mouse movement with a slight delay to create a smooth easing effect. The gallery's depth and curvature parameters are used to adjust the z-coordinate of this target, maintaining a realistic perspective. For each video plane, we retrieve its stored user data, including its base position, rotation, parallax vector, and random offsets. Using these values, we calculate the parallax effect based on the mouse distance, which makes the planes move slightly relative to the cursor's position. An oscillation effect is also applied to add a subtle, natural wave-like motion to the gallery. The positions and rotations of the planes are updated dynamically. The parallax and oscillation factors add depth and complexity to the scene. While rotation modifiers give each plane unique movement patterns, making the gallery feel alive and engaging. Finally, the camera continuously adjusts to focus on the calculated target, keeping the entire gallery in view. The scene is then rendered, updating everything in real time. With this setup, the gallery now reacts smoothly to mouse movements, creating a dynamic and interactive experience. And that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.